Hello! I've discovered the easiest way to paint a picture. So anybody who is anyone can paint a picture that look nice. Um, I didn't make it up, I just found it on the internet so I thought I'd show you guys. Uh, basically, if you can hold a pen, you can hold a paintbrush. And if you can draw this shape, then you can paint this picture. Is that that's all you need to be able to do. As long as you can do that, then this picture, you can do this picture. I'll show you the finished picture. That's not bad, is it? Didn't take very long. You'll be able to paint this by the end of this. First things first, choose the colours you wish to use. Take one of your chosen colours and put it on one half of the brush and then do the same with the other chosen colour on the other half of the brush so it looks like mine. Now make a few brush strokes on a piece of paper. I've used watercolour paper but you can use whatever you wish. Turn your brush over and continue with your brush strokes to get lots of paint on your brush and make sure the two colours don't really overlap. If you want red to be the colour on the outside of the leaves, make sure red is at the top of the brush. And if you want yellow to be on the outside of the leaves, make sure yellow is the top of the brush. And just do these circular motions to make petals. Now that one's quite big, so I'm going to do another big one here. And then I'm going to change these little ones into other big ones, just to, um, just to make it look like a proper flower. And you can still, you can move the paint around whilst it's still wet, so that's not a problem at all. So I just add these little ones on the inside, and I think that looks quite nice. Mine's move a peach. Now I just put a little spot on the inside of the flower to make it look more like a flower. And here's what it looks like with yellow on the outside of the flower. Using the same technique, I'm still doing sweeping round movements, but instead of red being on the top, yellow's on the top. I mean, you don't need to keep yellow on the top and red on the top for both for each individual flower. You can alternate them if you like, so they're, the flowers vary. And again, I just put another little spot on the inside of that. I make these leaves a little bit bigger. Now this one's slightly different. I'm just doing an up and down motion rather than a sweeping round motion, just to make the petals look slightly different than the other ones. I've used yellow and red for this painting, but you can use any colour you wish. Just pick your two favourite colours and have a go, see what you come up with. Apart from being an easy painting to paint, it is a really good colour exercise. So if you've just started and you want to see how colours work together and what colours to mix to make different colours, this is a really fun way of doing it and it, I think it's really effective as well. I'm just filling in the little white spaces on that particular flower and adding the centre to the flowers. I've decided to use um, the same colour as which is on the outside of the petals on the inside, but you can use any colour. You can use black or pink or green or any colour you like on the inside. And this one is just another up and down motion. I mean, I'm quite a sloppy painter, but I still think that it works out quite well. I'm using acrylics for this particular painting with a little bit of water. Um, for those of you who want specifics, a little bit of the water is like a ratio of 1 to 16. One part paint as in a sixteenth of water is really, really small. If you're, if you're no good at fractions, a sixteenth, the, the easiest way to make a sixteenth is to look at how much paint you, you have. Chop it in head. It's chop, sorry. Chop it in half in your head. That makes half. Then chop it in half again. That makes quarter. Chop it in half again. That makes an eighth. Then chop it in half one more time, and that makes a sixteenth. And that's about how much water you need. You just mix it in together. But have a play around and see what works best for you. You may prefer thicker paint or thinner paint. I mean, it is your painting, so you can decide how you'd like. How, you'd, um, how thick you'd like the paint. The basic, most important thing is that you have half a colour on one half of the paintbrush and the colour on the other half of the paintbrush to get this effect. But the more you experiment, the more you will learn and then the better you will become. I'm sure some of you are still saying, I can't do that, but I assure you with a little bit of practice, you can. 
Do you remember the first time you saw your mum take a pencil and draw in her eye while she put her makeup on? Or the first time you saw your dad take a sharp blade and run it all over his face whilst he had a shave? I'm sure when you watched that, you thought that you could never do that yourself. And probably the first time you ever had a go, you ended up looking like a clown who had been in a fight with a tiger. But you persevered, and now you can put on your makeup or without gouging your eyes out and have a shave without cutting your face to pieces. Well, most of the time anyway. My point is that these things are now second nature to you. And I can assure you that having a shave and putting on makeup is far more difficult than doing this painting, which is a much less dangerous pastime. I've also decided to add to the painting so that it varies some small, some small flowers. To do this, I've simply used a smaller brush. So to make big flowers, use a big flat brush. And to make small flowers, use a small flat brush. It really is that simple. You can make huge flowers if you get a huge flat brush. But I'm, at the moment, I'm just filling in spaces with these little flowers to see what looks best. And just touching up those, that one up there. I do prefer the yellow flower, which is below the one I'm currently painting. I think it looks nice with the yellow on the outside. But these little flowers, I think they're quite sweet. So I'm just, just finishing this one off. I think I need another big flower on the side. I'll add that in just a second. Yeah, there you go. Just there. I'll do red at the top. So they've gone quite orangey now, the, these flowers. But I think it... The, the changes in colours really do add to the painting, so don't worry if the colours mix in too much, as long as you can see the difference between the red and the yellow and how they blend together, I think it's quite good. So I just add in a few spots to the centre of those flowers. Right, so basically all we're doing is a circular motion with red at the top for red on the outside of the flowers, and a circular motion with yellow at the top for yellow on the outside of the flowers. It really is that simple. So that your flowers don't look like they're just falling through the air or they're just in, in the middle of nowhere, I've decided to put a bit of green on, on the painting, just downward strokes to make them look as if they're attached to something. And just add in a few leaves as well. I mean, the leaves are very simple. They're just one, two, or three stroke leaves. It's either one, um, one stroke, or just put one on each side and one in the middle to make the bigger leaves. I do like to vary the size of the leaves because it makes the painting look more interesting. And you just, I'm just filling in gaps, basically. At the moment, I'm just using green paint. But if you want to make the leaves look more interesting. You can use green and yellow like you have on the flowers so then there's yellow on the outside of the leaves or you could put yellow on the inside of the leaves just to add a bit of variation. And just doing some strokes down to basically just so it doesn't look like they're floating in the air. These flowers are really bright and friendly and I'm sure they'll be welcomed onto any wall. And when you have finished your painting, you can also scan or photograph the painting and make them into cards for your friends. Or you can print them onto A3 or A4 paper and just pop them in a simple clip frame and give them to people as presents. And you can also incorporate this technique into other paintings when you need to paint flowers. I think it is, is really effective and it's very simple. I've only been trying to do this for an hour and I've managed to come up with this, so I'm sure if you put your mind to it, then you, you really will be able to make a, a really nice flower. And you don't even have to keep the flowers the same colours, like, like I have here. You can do some yellow and red flowers and pink and purple flowers, all different colours. If you've had a really good go at this and you find that you really can't do it, then just send me your attempts to www.myspace.com front slash Frank Stacy, and if I agree that you really can't do it then I will send you this painting free of charge you can have this one but remember I only have one painting to give away so get practicing ta-da it's done